Hey there everybody, this is Tyler Tapper, so happy to be with you guys here today. If you haven't caught the first couple of videos in this series, go ahead and check down below. This is the third, and I'm actually going to go to four videos because this one ended up taking quite a while to get done. In the last video, you saw me get the base all put together. Now we're going to start working on the top of it. And the first thing we got to do is get all these live edge boards, uh, get them all trimmed down and get them ready to use. So I'm pretty lucky to live in a city that's relatively large and they have a pretty good selection of lumber. Here's some uh, beautiful pieces of olive wood and they just sectioned them down so you can see the original curve of the tree and you can tell these two were cut in series. They actually matched up when you set them on top of each other. So because they were still so rough and so natural, they did require quite a bit of prep to get how I wanted them. Uh, just getting the bark off was the first thing I was doing here. And then there's a lot of uh, milling marks that were still left in the top there, so it wasn't exactly just a buy it and use a piece of lumber. There's a lot of cracks like this, so figured out what I had to snap off and go back and smooth out with the chisel. One of the visions I had in my head when I started designing this thing was I wanted to have the uprights on it be branches. Uh, so I went out and I found a bunch of these hunks of olive wood and I thought this was a really interesting piece just because all the branches coming off it and I thought it would be a good one to have coming down the center. I didn't quite expect how much time it was going to take to prep it because I wanted it to look smooth and finished but also still natural at the same time. Um, I didn't want a lot of these little pieces just sticking out. Uh, again, it's going to be in a retail environment so I don't want people to be bumping onto a bunch of stuff. So yeah, here I'm just going through it, stripping off some of the bark. You get a pretty cool pattern when you start looking at the light and dark alternate like really quickly in really fine lines, so you get kind of a cool swirly pattern. In some ways it almost reminds me of like a Damascus knife blade. Putting this on the workbench, this is going to be one of the other uprights. This one's actually going to go all the way up through the workpiece. It's a little bit longer one, as you can see. And just kind of play with those light and dark areas uh, to get some kind of interesting patterns on this. Uh, trying to get all the different cool patterns of the wood and being very cognizant to keep as many different kinds as I can. Now this one's actually a piece of pine and it had some really cool knots coming out of it and all the little uh, little branches coming out of there. So I was trying to preserve some of the bark. I'm going to go back over this with some epoxy later off camera. Um, so I glued that piece of bark back on. But there's some really cool lichens on the back there too that I thought would, again, just add to that, add to all the textures on here. Because I love playing with epoxy, of course I had to do it in here. There were some structural parts that I was filling with epoxy. I like that crack on the back. I kind of wanted to fill that in just to make sure it was super strong. You can see me filling in a couple of holes here. Now the other thing I'm doing is in that middle part in here, these are butterfly milkweed seeds. And I just really think they have a really cool kind of airy texture. And I was trying to capture that, um, just kind of put a little bit extra into that area because this is going to be facing forward on the shelves. With them positioned in there, uh, just a little bit more epoxy over the top and then smoothing them out so they kind of float up into the workpiece. This is that same upright and again I'm just kind of playing with textures and um, different finishes on there. I'm heating it up so maybe the epoxy gets a little bit farther into the grain of the wood. How much different it makes but again I was just kind of experimenting with it. After the epoxy cured I had to go back and knock down all the spots that I had put epoxy on. That way the finish that I put over the entire thing would stick to that. Uh, it was also I wanted to go back and make sure that bark was very smooth so I worked my way down through all the grits. It's a little bit challenging. It was pretty hard on the paper because all the little stumps that were coming out through there. Um, but yeah, you just had to get down in there and spend some time on them and work it down to the wood. With this shot, you can really see how unfinished the wood was in a lot of parts of it. Um, this is just from when they put it through the planer. It's a bunch of chatter in there. It didn't quite get all the way down through it. So when I started out with it, I started out with a hand plane. Did not have a big enough block plane for this. Um, probably should have went out and bought a different one, but I started going after it to see how well I could smooth everything down. For way too long with that hand planer, I had to go back over it and decide to see if the belt sander would take care of it any bit any quicker. Got through a couple of belts, then all of a sudden it started making a funny noise. 
I think what ended up happening is the dust outlet port on there got blocked up somehow and it just way overheated it melted something inside there and that pulley you can see there just went off kilter a little bit and just wouldn't stay right so now on the third method of getting all these ridges off I at least finished up this last board with the random orbital sander decided that was taking too long and I was gonna go out and buy another belt sander here while I was waiting to get a new belt sander, I wanted to go back and start getting the bottoms of these boards flat. And it ended up being a pretty big issue trying to figure out how to make these all parallel to the bottom of that base. And I'll revisit that more later. With the new belt sander in tow, I could definitely tell if that old exhaust vent was plugged on there. Check out how much sawdust is spitting up on my arm there. Turn me yellow. reoccurring theme that I'm going to be dealing with now is how to make all those shelving level. So this piece right here is actually going to be for two levels of the shelving. Uh, my brother had an idea where he thought, he was like, well, why don't you actually just um, cut out a section in the middle of this one and put the board in there and have it lay on it like a little shelf. I thought that was pretty cool. So I went to the table saw and basically I'm just cutting through there, making a, bu making a bunch of cuts and yeah, just hollowing out an area. I don't know if you noticed earlier, but I was coming in and measuring out on the base of that so I could make sure that, that cut was parallel with the bottom of this uh, board here. And it worked pretty well. I had to shim it up a little bit, but you can kind of see how I hollowed it out. After I got the majority of the material removed with the table saw, I just went back in and cleaned up the edge of the chisel here. Coming back in now and doing a little bit of final shaping. I wanted to make the transitions a little bit smoother on there, so I came back and just was rounding over all the corners of it on the top there. There's actually a decent amount of reshaping to make that slot parallel to the base that I did off camera, uh, just with the chisel, just doing minor adjustments, um, making sure the top and the bottom are just right. That's my piece of the shelf there that I was taking out, just kind of as a guide to show where I was at and what I was doing. I've gotten to the point where I can think about hanging that first uh, shelf on there. So the right side is going to go in that slot that I just made. And the left side here, there's going to be one of those uprights that you saw earlier that's going to go through this hole there. Put that piece of plywood on the bottom so I wouldn't hit the table. Getting the lines put down here where I'm going to cut, I need a place so I can slide the upright into the edge here. And I'm using a jigsaw just to get the cut reft out. Of course the jigsaw isn't horribly precise, so I'm coming back with a hand file to make everything perpendicular and getting all the rough marks out. So after I got that all perfect, of course, I decided I didn't like it. <laughs> so came back with the jigsaw and I wanted to basically make it look like it was kind of indenting into the wood and give it a little bit of a curve there. This was the part of the project that I really had no idea how I was going to do it until I started doing it. And that was because all of these pieces that are on here are curved and there's no really right angles for you to measure off of, it's not very simple to get this level. I'd spent some time trying to figure out how to measure up, and in the end it just seemed easier to put it all down and just uh, stick a level on there, mark where I wanted the shelf to lay on the other side, and just start cutting on it. So sorry this is a little bit off camera, but what I'm doing here is the next shelf is going to sit on top of that piece I'm right in front of. So I'm trying to figure out how to mark an edge around the top there and make it parallel with the bottom. I got a right edge and a level and I'm just going and just putting a little mark across there so I can go back and cut it later. This is the piece you saw me marking with a pencil in the last frame so I'm going back and I wanted to create a little ledge on all the pieces. I thought that would make it a little bit stronger so it kind of had a positive lock when I glued it together. And you can see how it's going to fit together right here. Heading back over to the centerpiece, uh, those marks I made with the 
square and the level. I'm just kind of going cutting into a little bit uh, so it'll kind of guide the saw all the way through and this is going to create that flat top so that the other side of the shelf can sit on here level. Of course before I put the shelf on I have to attach these pieces of wood down onto the base of it so I'm sanding a little spot away uh, so I can put the glue down. I'm going to come in from the bottom and screw up into these pieces. I'm measuring in there because of course I really do not want to go out and put a hole in that plywood on the top. Now if I was thinking what I would have done is I would have drilled a little pilot hole straight down where I knew that log was going to be sitting then I would have a place where I knew I could just drill straight up into the log and I would be fine. You can see me struggling a little bit to actually get these driven in here. I couldn't really get my elbow in there so I couldn't get a lot of force on these screws to get them to go all the way up through. I was trying to hold the log down on the top and trying to get the screws driven in. Doing the last little bit of prep to the shelf, just a Forstner bit to cut out a radius in there. I'm going to cut those pieces off. I want this to go kind of organically into these two branches that come up next to it. So cutting in there and making it so it'll fit in right. I went and I sat everything in place on the table and I realized I wanted this shelf to have a little bit more of an angle, come towards the back a little bit more. So to do that I had to cut out a little slit so yeah just so the whole thing would rotate in a little bit more. With that angle relief cut a little bit you can see how it'll rotate back in the edge there and the branches will fit up a little bit closer in there. I wanted the transition to be a little bit more rounded so I cut that little corner off and then filed it smooth. I was going through so much finish sanding on this project I wanted to have something nice to make sure the finish laid down well so I got, got a new one of these. What I'm doing right now is I'm sanding over the bottoms of both of these shelves before I put them in. I figured it would be quite a bit easier to uh, work through the grit and then go ahead and put the finish on them while they're still off of there. Then I can just um, sand away any areas that I need to glue. For the finish on this I'm just using regular uh, semi-gloss polyurethane. I didn't want to use full gloss. I figured there'd be a lot of finger smudges and everything on here. Um, I still wanted it to hold up pretty well to traffic so did the semi-gloss with it. Okay. So I'm about ready to wrap up the video here. I'm gonna get this other upright glued on here and get the shelf glued in. Uh, I did also end up screwing this up through the bottom off of camera uh, but just I let it set up with the glue first so it wasn't sliding around while I was trying to drill into it. So after all that glue was dried and it was all screwed together the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the top of this perfectly level so it's ready for the next shelf. I started belt sanding it and then I decided why not just put the level on top of the belt sander. So here I am, I taped it to the top of there that way I didn't have to keep going back and forth and checking it to make sure everything was level. Well, thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. Again, the first parts are in the description. The next part will be in the description when it comes out. There's going to be a fourth part and we'll finally get this project all finished up. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate a like on there. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and do that, and I will see you guys in the next episode.